Okay guys, we are going to be um, talking about PGP, also known as Pretty Good Privacy. I'm going to show you how to set this up on Mozilla Thunderbird. And if you guys don't know what that is, that is a free email client made by Mozilla, the same people that make Firefox. Okay, and you can use it on um, Windows, Linux, Mac, so it's, it's, it's a cross-platform free email client. Okay. So, what is PGP, also known as Pretty Good Privacy? Well, it's, a, it's an encryption, okay? It's, it's a way to encrypt your emails. And um, it's not just for emails, it can also be for files, okay? So say I wanted to encrypt some files that are on my Linux server, I can encrypt them with my public key. And in order for me to decrypt them, I need my private key to decrypt them, okay? So this is, this is very secure. Now you're wondering, why the heck would I want to encrypt my emails? Well, if you're using like an email server such as um, Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, any of them, well, basically, your emails are in the hands of the government. They're in the hands of Google. They're in the hands of basically anyone. It's not very secure. It's Now, I run my own email server, but it's still a pretty good idea to... Um, keep those files encrypted on disk okay them emails so how does this work well you have a public key and then you have a private key okay now your private key is what is used to decrypt the data and the public key is what you give everybody hence the word public so you give somebody your public key and that public key tells the program how to encrypt the data they're wanting to send you and then the only way to be able to decrypt that data that they encrypted is with your private key, okay? So that's how it works. It's like a two-way type of thing. You have a public key, which you give to everybody so they know how to encrypt the data to you. And then you have a private key, which is how you decrypt the data. The private key, obviously, you want to keep safe. You do not want to give this anywhere. don't want to upload it to no Google Drive, none of that. You also want to password protect the private key as well. I recommend you store your private keys in an encrypted uh, container, such as Vericrypt, which is the su successor of TrueCrypt. But um, you may be asking, how secure is um, PGP? Well, <laughs> let's just say that the FBI themselves use it, okay? Basically, the British police investigators were unable to break PGP, so instead had to resort to using RIPA legislation to demand the password slash keys. The British citizen did not hand over his private key, hence he was sentenced to jail for nine months because the British police could not decrypt the PGP encrypted files. Okay, so basically it's about as secure as TrueCrypt. <laughs> it's very good. So you may be wondering, okay, what, what does this look like? Well, on Thunderbird, every time you go to, to an email that somebody sent you that is encrypted, you're going to be prompted with your passphrase for your private key to be able to decrypt the email. Okay? Now, you may be wondering, okay, what's this look like if I was looking at, say, with um, Gmail or something? If you was going to send somebody an encrypted email, or if you were receiving one, this is what it would look like before you decrypted it. Okay? So this is what the FBI would be looking at. They'd be looking at this encrypted mumbo jumbo that they wouldn't be able to make sense of and the only way they can decrypt it is with your private key okay so let's get started with um, Mozilla Thunderbird okay so this is our this is an email client that I recommend so we have two um, demo accounts set up on my email server we have demo at gtexl.net and demo2 at gtexl.com, okay? So the first thing is we have to install two programs, okay? Two two pieces of software. One is going to be a plugin for Thunderbird, and one is going to be GPG, which is a, um, a program that uses the PGP encryption, basically. It's a program that handles making the keys, doing the encryption, that sort of thing. So the first thing we want to do is you want to go to a web browser and you want to um, go to gpg for win.org, okay? 
So this is this this will be what it, you're going to be able to. Um, this basically puts PGP, the PGP algorithm, on your computer, so you can interact with it, add your public keys, your private keys, stuff like that. Now I don't know if it's already on this. Um, okay, good. It's not on this yet. So you're going to want to download this, of course. And it's going to download here. Okay. And I, I will include the links in the um, description, of course. And the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get um, the Thunderbird extension. And it is called ENIG Mail. Okay. So it's basically an interface that works with GPG for Win. It's basically a plugin, an interface that basically makes it work on actual Thunderbird. Okay, it's hard to describe this. So you're also going to want to download that. Okay, and you see it's in a .xpi format. That's basically a Thunderbird extension file. Okay, so first you want to install the GPG for Win because this ain't going to work very well without it. Okay. Installer language is going to be um, English. Next, next. Um, just leave the defaults. You don't need it on your desktop, but do keep it in the start menu. Okay, so now it's installing. And this is a actual VM that I'm RDP'd into. So if it lags a little bit, you can hear my fan kicking up. That's because it's doing a lot. It's recording and running. I'm running about six different VMs right now, running all types of operating systems. I got PFSense running, Debian, VM, just all kinds of VMs to experiment with. Okay, once it says completed, you're going to click next. You don't need to show the readme file and then finish. So now you're going to open up your um, Thunderbird. Make sure you've already downloaded the um, ENIG mail extension, that, like I already showed you. And you're going to want to install it. Okay. So what you do is you go to Tools up here. And if you don't see this, you have to right click and turn the menu bar on. Okay. If you don't see this at the top of your Thunderbird, right click right next to a tab and toggle the menu bar on then go to tools add-ons and then once you're in here you're gonna see this cog over here click the drop down and then click install add-on from file okay now you're gonna locate that file that you download that extension file probably gonna be in the downloads you see right there it ends in the dot XPI format hit open here we go it shows Ingai Mail, I don't know how I pronounce it, I'm sorry. Hit install now. Ingai Mail will, inst will install after you restart Thunderbird, so hit the cl click on the restart now button. Okay, and we don't want to go through their um, setup, so configure Ingai Mail later. And hit cancel on that. Close. Okay, so there we go. We got, we we have it installed. If we go into extensions, it's in there. Okay? So that's good. And obviously, it's automatically updated to the latest version. Okay. So now what do you do? Well, what you do next is you have to create um, your private and public key. Okay? So to do this, you're going to click on the Ingram Mail up in the menu bar. And if you don't see it again, you got to toggle it on. And go to key management. Now in key management, you're going to go to click on generate new key pair. Okay, so this is where it's going to, um, this is where you're going to create your um, PGP key. Okay, this is the most important part. So you choose the account you want to make it for, but we're going to, the best way to do it is you want to create one PGP key that works for all your email addresses at once, okay? That's the best way to do it. That way you don't have to have like 
you know, 20 different PGP keys. It's, it's, you know, this is more efficient. I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so uncheck this. Now you do want a passphrase. Now a passphrase is, is basically a password. Um, passphrase means it can have spaces in it basically. But um, you want to use something secure. Use KeyPass for this. But this is just a demo, so I'm obviously just going to type something in. But use KeyPass, make it like at least 45 characters long, have special characters, everything. KeyPass it, have good um, entropy and everything else. Okay? You're going to repeat it again. Now, key expires. This is important, okay? You want your key to expire. And the reason is, be is because encryption changes over time. And plus, if you get more emails or maybe you delete an email account in the future, you know, you, you can't predict the future. And also, if you um, lose your private key in the future, something like that, you want the key to eventually expire out. That way, you can generate a new key every year and keep up to date with the encryption algorithms, your email list, everything else. So you're going to put in one year. Make sure you do not check the key does not expire. You want the key to expire. Hit the advanced tab. Make sure this is 4096 RSA. Okay. Once you have your passphrase set, which hopefully is really fucking secure, you're going to hit generate key. Okay. Now it's going to say generate key for blah, blah, blah. Now we will add the other email, email address to this key. I'll show you how to do that once the key is generated. So hit generate key, and you want to move your mouse randomly, like all over the place, going a million miles an hour everywhere while it generates it. It says key generation completed. Now you want to create a revocation certificate. A revocation certificate basically means you can revoke, basically um, shut down this PGP key in the future at any time if need be. Okay. Say maybe your private key gets compromised, who knows. You want to generate this, you want to secure this revocation certificate somewhere safe, an encrypted drive, somewhere where nobody can get, get their hands on it, okay? So generate certificate, and in this demo, I don't have an encrypted drive on this VM or anything, but you want to save it somewhere safe and secure, okay? See how it says REV? You want to save it under this name. It's going to save as a .asc file. Hit save. Now it's going to ask you to enter the passphrase for this key again. Hopefully you used key pass and you copy and paste. Now it says the revocation certificate has been successively created. Okay. See, it even tells you, make sure you store this somewhere safe. Well, you don't want to store it on a CD or USB disk. That wouldn't be smart. Hit OK. Now you're not going to see anything right here because you have to refresh it. So exit out. Click back on E-I-N-G mail. I'm just going to call it um, ing mail. Click on key management. Now it's going to show up, but we're not done yet. Click on the little drop down tab and you see this has no other identities. Now you can add multiple identities to a um, key pair and you want to do this, you want to add all your email addresses into one key. That way you don't have to create a million different PGP keys. You just want one PGP key that works for all your email addresses. So you're going to right click on this and click um, manage user IDs. Now here's where you can change the primary user ID and add additional user IDs. So you're going to click add. You're going to type in the name, which this is probably going to be your full name. It always usually is. So we're just going to type, um, um, what's the name for this account? I forget. Robert Gobert. Okay. So you're going to want, usually your name's going to be the same, but both these, these two accounts are, have different names. So usually you're going to type in your, your full name. Usually it's going to be the same for all these user IDs. And then you're going to type in another email address that you own that you want to add to this PGP key. So this is going to be demo2 at gtexcel.com. Hit OK. Now if you look, now you have two email addresses that correspond with the same PGP key. This is good. So say if you have a Gmail, a Yahoo, um, an at gtexl.net, etc., you can add them all into one PGP key. Okay. Keep adding them, keep adding all your emails, and then once you're done, you're gonna hit close window. Now you can also set a primary email address that represents the entire PGP key set. Okay. So what one do you want to be your main email? So 
I want my Carlos one to be the main one, so I'll hit set primary. Then now Carlos will be the main email for this. Okay, and we're gonna hit close window. We're not done yet. Um, you can also click on key properties and you can view when it expires. You wanna write this down. So you wanna say, add it into your um, Google Calendar and set a reminder. So on this date, renew or create a new PGP key set, okay? Because this is when your key is going to expire, okay? Now this just shows you um, the encryption and all the emails that are associated with it. But what you want to do is you want to click select action, add a photo. Now this has to be a JPEG and I recommend it be pretty small, not too big, okay? Now I don't have any JPEGs on here to demonstrate with, but if you have like a profile picture of yourself, go ahead and add a photo. Okay. Make sure it's a JPEG. Make sure it's relatively small. Don't make it a huge one. And I mean relatively small, like say like a Twitter icon size, like not one that's fully blown up, like one that you normally see, that type of size. Okay. Then once you have that, you have to propagate your public key. In order for people to send you encrypted emails, they have to know your public key. So you have to get it out there by means. They, there are PGP key servers on the internet. A main popular one is pgp.mit.edu. Okay, so Massachusetts Institute of Technology runs their own PGP public key server. Another one is um, Ubuntu's key, key server, which they run right here. See, even Ubuntu runs one. Now you're like, how do I put my key in here? Well, you're going to have your you can copy and paste your um, public key into here and hit submit. Your public key, not your private. Or you can you can go into the ing mail key management, right click, and hit upload public keys to key server. Okay, you're going to want to do this. You want to do this right app. You do this after you're done adding all your user IDs, adding your photo. Once your PGP key is set and ready to go, you want to upload it to a key server. Okay, so you're going to right click on your key, which is going to be bold, and you're going to hit upload public keys to key server. Okay, so if you go ahead and search, you're going to show up in these systems. Does that make sense? See how I show up in these systems? That way, people are able to pull your PGP public key. Okay. And this is what a public key will look like. Now we're not done yet. We want to back up our public key and private keys, okay, for this. So to do that, export keys or export keys to file. Now you want to export your secret key. This is also called your private key. Now you want to store this somewhere safe. Your private key is critical. Somebody gets their hands on it, it's not good. They will, they'll be able to decrypt everything. Okay, so store this in a um, encrypted drive, like a very encrypt folder. We're going to rename the end of it private key, but you definitely want to keep the name and everything so you know what this PGP key um, corresponds with. Hit save. The key was saved successfully. Like I said, you want to store it somewhere that you remember and somewhere that is secure and safe. Okay. Now we're going to do export keys to file again, export public keys. Your public key, you don't have to make sure it's safe because obviously it's public. You, you put it on a, private, on a public server anyway. So now if we go to documents, you'll see we have these three files. Okay, We have our private, which you don't want anyone to get a hold of. You want to put that somewhere safe and secure. We have our public, which if somebody if somebody's like, how do I send you an encrypted email? You give them your public key, okay? Normally, they'll, they'll find your public key from a online key server, okay? Which you already uploaded your PGP key to a key server, so you're good to go. But um, if they don't know what key server is, you just send them your public key, and they can encrypt emails to you now. This you want to store somewhere safe. That's your um, revocation certificate to revoke your key if need be, okay? So we backed up those. It looks like we're good to go, right? Okay. I think we're good to go. 
Now you may be like, okay, say I want to send um, my friend a um, an encrypted email because I'm using PGP, right? To do that, you're going to click up here, key management, and then you're going to um, click on key server, search for keys, and then you can choose the key server. I recommend pgp.mint.eu. And then you type in their email address or maybe their name. Okay, so say I want to um, send an encrypted email to um, Josh. Okay, so now it's going to come back with, uh, it looks like it just searched for cheat ham. <laughs> now it's going to come back with a crap ton of emails. You're going to find your, um, your friend, select him. Okay, and then hit OK. So what you're doing is you're looking for your friend's public key so you can send them an encrypted email. Okay, and in return they're gonna they're gonna get your public key as well. They're gonna search. They're gonna know your email address. They're gonna search for your public key, import it, and then boom, you both can. Now it's two ways. You both can send each other encrypted emails. Okay, so once you find them, um, you can add all their their secondary emails as well, and then hit OK going to show their fingerprint and everything else and when their keys expire and when they were created hit OK now they're added okay now both of these keys are added okay that's how you add your friends um, public keys into your key ring this is what they call it I know it says key management but it's called your PGP key ring okay now, like I said PGP is not just for um, email it's also for encrypting files as well okay and I'll show you how to do that on Linux as well but I want to show you an example of this so let's go ahead and create a new email and let's send it to demo to at gtexcel.com okay Okay, so what you want to do is you're going to want to um, we're going to want to change a few things with Engine Mail. If you if you notice right here, right here it says Engine Mail is disabled for the selected identity. You're going to click on that, click Configure, and we're going to want to um, enable Open PGP support. Okay, but you're going to want to click on Engine Mail preferences. Okay. Okay, let's see what we got going on in here. Here's where you can change how long it remembers your passphrase for. Um, sending. Okay, that, that looks that looks fine. Let's see here. So en enable open PGP support for this identity and it's gonna use their PGP key. Okay, so what you see now is if you see this, this means the email is going to be encrypted. This means if you want to sign the email. Now what does signing mean? Signing is basically where it signs using the cryptography with your public key so the other person knows that the email actually came from you. It's kind of like a checksum, kind of like um, a way to make sure that the email was not altered in any way. You don't have to do this, but you can if you want. So we just type a subject. This is a demo. Now, please note that the subject line will not be encrypted. The only thing that's encrypted is the body, which is the message. So if, you, if you're basically saying, hey, I have the weed or whatever in the subject, everybody's going to know. The FBI is going to know. So you want to keep the subject pretty um, not very detailed, basically. Okay. Then you just type your email, you attach your attachments, whatever you got to do. Okay, hit send. Now it's going to ask you for your um, passphrase. You're like, why is it asking me? Because you are signing. If you didn't sign, it wouldn't ask you. Hopefully, you key pass this. And now it's going to send the email. And you see how instant it was, because you know, my mail server. 
So when they get this email, this it's going to look, it's not going to show it down here, it should. Um, but if you look in the source of it, this is what they're this is what they got. Begin PGP message. Okay. And there should be a way to change Here we go. Queue selection. Um, account settings. Open PGP security. Okay. So this is what you're going to want to do. Okay. You're going to want to right click on your email and go to your account settings which is going to be settings you're going to want to go to open pgp security and you're going to want to um, enable this okay for both of these accounts and then hit okay okay now if you don't type in a password it's it's not going to show anything by default it's not going to show the message but if you were not in Thunderbird, say you was in your um, web browser, it would show the random mumbo jumbo. But it wants to keep it clean so it doesn't show it unless you um, unless you decrypt it. So let's decrypt it. Now you can see this is the encrypted message mahahahaha. Okay, so that's he basically decrypted it from the source. And as you can see, since he signed it, it's going to say if it's um, if the key matches what you have on file and you see it matches so that way you know this is this this email message didn't get tampered in any way basically okay for integrity see how it says good signature that's what you want so if we view the source you can obviously see right here you cannot find this is the encrypted message anywhere can you see it just doesn't exist because right here is where the PGP message is. This is what it'd show in like a normal client, but the reason why it shows up blank is because InGuy Mail um, wants to keep it clean, basically. They don't want you to see a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but this is actually what it looks like. Okay, so see that? Big difference, okay? So I think you get the point of how to use PGP on Thunderbird, okay? Now you're probably wondering, um, how do I encrypt files with it? Okay, there's there's um, a way to do it on Windows. Since you have um, GPG for a Win installed, it comes with a program called Cleopatra. And if it doesn't pop up down here, you're gonna have to search for it. So you click on that, it opens up, and as you can see, it shows your private key okay so this is like another key ring to manage your stuff but what you can do is click on file sign encrypt files if it loads um, I don't know what it's doing Yeah, Cleopatra messed up on us. Let's exile Thunderbird because Thunderbird is, is using the key ring, so it might interfere with it. This is Windows for you. Windows is not the best. So let's first let's 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 create a um a file to encrypt. Say a new text file demo. So we have a file that we want to encrypt. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna open up Cleopatra, and we're gonna encrypt it with our um, our private key. Okay, so make sure you selected on your on the key that you want to encrypt it with. Locate the file. Okay, so here we go. We want to encrypt only. We don't we don't care about signing it. Okay. 
And this is if you want to have it, um, there's two ways of encrypting. You can have it in the ASCII plain text, which is what you want to use if it's an email. And the reason why you want to use that is because there's two different ways um, PGP can encrypt a file. There is binary, which is um, basically makes like a, it's a binary, encrypts it to a binary. And there's the plain text, which is where it puts it in the um, plain text form where you see the random random letters and stuff, which is what, which is the format it uses when you want to encrypt data for an email. So if it's a file, you you don't want to use ASCII Armor, and I'll show you the difference between them. So let's not encrypt it with ASCII Armor, okay? Um, I don't select this because because this is not going to securely delete the unencrypted file. You want to use something like Eraser, okay, to securely delete the unencrypted file. So you just want to encrypt, hit next. Now to whom do you want to encrypt? Now this is if you want to encrypt the file for somebody else. Say I want to encrypt this file for Josh, okay? So only he can decrypt it with his private key, okay? But no, I'm, making, I'm, I'm just encrypting this file for myself, so you're going to select yourself. But if you was going to encrypt it for somebody else, you'd want to um, select their name. So I'm going to hit on me, click add, and now you see it shows down in this drop, drop down, okay? Click encrypt, and it should encrypt it, okay? Hit finish. So let's take a look. So as you can see now, demo.txt gpg. It saves it with a .gpg extension, which means it's an encrypted one. Now, if the normal one you want to right click, you want to shred it with a um, secure means such as the eraser program. But let's go ahead and let's let's take a look at this, okay? So let's open this um, with Notepad, and as you can see, you cannot even read this because it's in binary. Okay, this it can't even render it. It's just showing random characters. But you're like, okay, what if I was to um, encrypt this in the ASCII format. Now you only want to do this if it's for an email, but you can if you want. So we're going to select on our thing again, sign encrypt files, demo, next. We're going to do the text output ASCII armor, next, for ourselves, encrypt, uncheck that, click finish. Now, now I can show you the difference here. Now it saves it in a .ask format, which means ASCII. We're going to right click, um, open, open it with notepad, and I'm going to show you the difference here. See the difference? There's two ways of encrypting the file. The best way, if it's a file itself, if it's just a file, you want to stick with binary. But if it's for an email, you can't send a binary over an email. You can't just, you want to use the ASCII format for an email. That's why you do that. But like if it's a video, a file, anything like that, you're going to want to stick with binary. So that's, that's, those are the two different ways of encrypting with PGP. You got the plain text, which is the ASCII format, and then you have the um, binary format. And they also call it armor for the ASCII format as well. So if you're working on Linux, it's dash dash armor, which basically means put it in the plain text format. Okay, so that's how you encrypt files on... Um, on Windows using the Cleopatra that comes with GPG for Win. You can also decrypt them by right clicking and hitting decrypt. It's going to ask you for your passphrase for your private key to decrypt it. Okay, so now let's get into um, Linux. Okay, you want to know how to implement your um, private and public keys on Linux because you want to encrypt your files on your Linux server, say for backing up securely, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the private key off of this machine and put it on my um, current machine, okay? So give me a second here while I transfer this file over. Oh, I forgot. I'm not in the right... Um, I forgot I'm not in VM VirtualBox itself. I'm in remote desktop, so I can't drag and drop. <laughs> um, did I just delete that? I did. I did not mean to delete that. 
So I'm going to never do this. Never, um, never email your private key. The only thing you want to email is your public. <laughs> Desperate times call for desperate measures, though. So I'm going to ship this right on over to myself. And then we'll um, pick it up on um, here. OK? So give me a second here. Give me a second here, and we will do the um, Linux um, command line tutorial. Okay. File, save as, save it in downloads. Downloading message, thank you. Let's upload it to a um, Linux box, shall we? Um, just Excel, downloads, upload, OK. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your private key that you exported from um, InGuy Mail Key Management, the private key one, not the public. And you're going to want to um, upload it to your Linux box your server. I recommend you do this via a secure way such as um, SFTP which is um, FTP over SSH and I'm just going to name it private.asc because it's, it's an ASCII format. You want it to be an ASCII format. Okay. Okay, so we're on a Linux box. Let's do an LS and we see we have private.asc ASC. Okay, if we cat this, and I'm basically exposing this private key, but it's not going to be public anyway, it's not going to be used. You can see we have our public key along with our private key in one. Okay, in ASCII format, because obviously this isn't a binary, you can read this. Okay, so what you got to do is on Linux, you want to import it to your GPG key ring. Okay. Linux uses GPG and it's almost built in on every Linux distro. This is Debian. Okay, so to do that, you are going to type um, gpg dash dash allow dash secret dash key dash import dash dash import and then the name of the file. Okay, and as you can see, it should have imported it. You see how it says Carlos Morgan and it says one new signature added. Secret key is imported one. Okay, so that's good. So we have our private key and public key imported and also created our um, GPG um, configuration file, which is good. So if we want to see that's in there, we can do GPG dash dash list dash secret dash um, keys. And as you can see, it's in there right here under the user ID of 13D35D39 260723 is when it was created and it also shows when this key expires now if you look it says UID which means user IDs you can see that it has both of our email addresses in there on that one single key that's what you want you want all your email addresses to be on one PHP key ring so that's our um, private key let's take a look at our um, public key to do that gpg dash list dash um, keys and as you can see here is our public see how it says pub that means a public key so that's, there's our one public key sec means security or secret which would be your private key so now um you're like how do i implement this how do i use how do i encrypt files with my public key so let's say we create something um nano demo this is a demo file so if we look cat demo we have a file named demo that contains some contents how do we encrypt this file securely okay so um, to do this 
you are going to do gpg dash e for encrypt dash r for recipient and the recipient is going to be yourself okay so you're going to put your email address in here and then the name of the file now you can also sign sign it if you want to for integrity but i recommend you don't do that with encrypting files okay So now it's going to be like, we're not certain if this key belongs to the person name, blah, 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 blah. You're going to hit yes. And then boom. Do not less. And if you look, we have um, demo.gpg. Okay. Now if we nano into it, demo.gpg, you can see we obviously cannot read that. It's in binary format. Now say you didn't want to encrypt that to a binary format. You can do GPG dash E dash A for ASCII or armor recipient, which is going to be yourself again, right? And then demo. Hit Y, enter. Do an LS. Now you have demo dot ASCII instead of dot GPG. Nano demo dot ASK. There, there is your encrypted file. It doesn't matter if it's a text, a file, um, a video, a picture, it doesn't matter. It encrypts anything, okay? Now I recommend for files, you encrypt in binary. Don't encrypt in ASCII. Only use ASCII for emails, okay? So that's how you encrypt files. And obviously you're gonna want to delete the unencrypted version. You're gonna want to do shred demo. Now if you nano demo now, if I can type. Now if they see it's been shredded, they can do RM demo. And now the only thing that's sitting on there is the encrypted versions, okay? Now you're probably like, um, how do I decrypt this? I wanted to decrypt, okay? I have an encrypted file sitting, I want to be able to decrypt it, okay? You gotta make sure that file was encrypted for yourself, not somebody else, because you're not gonna be able to decrypt somebody else's encrypted file. So to decrypt, you do gpg dash um, d for decrypt. You can dash do dash o for where you want to output the file instead of it just spinning out in your face. Or you can also redirect. So let's not add an output yet. Let's do demo.asc. It's going to ask for your passphrase. Basically, it has your private key on this server. So it's able to decrypt, but needs your passphrase to be able to use that private key to decrypt. If you was on anyone's server and this file was sitting there, they wouldn't be able to decrypt it because they don't even have the private key to work with. You had the private key on this server. So type in the passphrase of your private key. Boom. See how it, see how it then spits it out? We don't want to spit it out. We want to, we want to decrypt it to a file, right? Because if you do an LS, see, it didn't put it anywhere. It just spit it out at us, right? We don't want to spit it out. So gpg-d-o. Um, demo.asc and now if we do an ls we now see unencrypted okay so you do you do a dash o for output and then you specify where you want it to be saved the output of the file and then you specify the file name demo.asc or .gpg so that's how you encrypt and unencrypt files on um, Linux you can also um, import somebody's public key. Um, so let's sh let's let's show you how to do that, okay? Because um, I'm pretty sure you're wondering how to do that, okay? So we go to pgp.mint.edu. So let's say we let's encrypt something for for Josh. So we're going to go to a PGP server, pgp.mint.edu, search form, and then we're going to copy their public key block, nano public.asc, enter for x, y, enter, gpg, dash dash import public.asc, and as you can see, it added him. He is now in our 
he's now in our key ring. Sales says pub, we have his public key. So now we can we can encrypt a file on here for Josh. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go um, GPG dash E dash R, or let's make it ASCII dash recipient is gonna be. So we're encrypting this for Josh. There we go. If you look right here, this is the encrypted format for Josh. And the only way to be able to decrypt this is with his private key. You can't decrypt this. So that shows you how to mess with um, PGP on um, the Linux terminal. Okay, And now I will include the command cheat sheet in the description of this video for the Linux commands for GPG to be able to use PGP. Okay, So you will see that in the video description along with the download links and everything else for um, the plugin and everything else for Thunderbird. Okay, So you just send this file to Josh or upload it to his Dropbox or whatever you're doing and that is stored encrypted and only he can decrypt it because you used his public key to encrypt the file. Does that make sense? So that's how you that's how you're able to use it on Thunderbird, how you're able to use it on the command line is very very um, it's a very very useful thing and very very secure. And um, I am you I am um, using it to back up my entire servers and encrypt all the files with my um, PGP key. Um, my public PGP key at 4096 bit RS RSA, which is very damn good. And then store it on Dropbox, and um, Dropbox can't um, decrypt the files or even tamper with them. They need my private key. And they don't have my private keys because my private key is stored somewhere safe. Okay? And it, it's not good. And if you're using your servers just to back up and stuff, don't import your private key on the server just import your public key because all you need is the public key to encrypt to that said key does that make sense like I like I don't have Josh's private key on the server and I just encrypted the file for him does that make sense so if the server is just going to be used for encrypting files uh, for say like a backup server just import your public key on the server do not put your private key anywhere on that server okay so I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, of course, leave a comment. And of course, I'm going to put all the, the links and the cheat sheets and everything else in the video description. Thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry this went on for a long time.